Hi guys, so now I'm gonna show you how to create your own models for Stable Diffusion. Now, if you've never used Stable Diffusion, it's a, it's a pretty cool app. It basically enables you to create images using AI from prompts. So if you've ever worked for something like Dolly or Midjourney, you know that you can type in a description and it will give you an image based on that description. Well, Stable Diffusion gives you the ability to do that on your own hardware. And there's also services in the cloud, but I'm using uh, a cloud-based VM, but you could still do this on your own machine if you have a machine that's got an NVIDIA GPU and that will certainly accelerate the uh, process. So once you have Stable Diffusion installed and you have it up and running, you can use the tools available with it to create your own models based on images that you took using your own cameras. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So in this one, I'm going to walk through the process of showing you how to take your images, put them into a trainer that will then train based off of your images. Then you can take the model it generates and put that into Stable Diffusion and then use that to create images with whatever likeness that you want to put in those images. For mine, I'm going to be using my face and therefore you can see that the images that it is creating are based on the face that you're seeing on the camera right now. So let's just go right over to the process and show you just using demos on how I did this and I'll show you some of the results once I'm done. So here are the images I'm going to use but before I get into this um, just to talk about the machine I have here this is an Azure VM that I uh, built uh, for this purpose and it's a, a GPU VM on Azure and the reason I'm doing that is because it's going to be much more high performance than what I have available on my desktop. My desktop would probably would do just fine for this but it just take a lot longer so I'm just using this VM because it's uh, going to accelerate the process of building a model but as long as you have a GPU on your machine it, it'll do this kind of building of models and all this training that you can do with this stuff but in any case I'm going to be working with these images um, for building my model now I took all these with my phone using the selfie cam now with a model the main thing that you need uh, for building a model is a lot of high quality images by high quality I don't necessarily mean professional images you just need to make sure that the lighting is good and that they're decent resolution and the variety of images that you take shouldn't be the same pose. It should be a variety of different poses and angles and expressions of the person. Now, these images, I just kind of moved my phone around and made faces as I did it. So I got a lot of different angles and a lot of different expressions, which is what I'm going to use to create the, the model here. And that will work just fine for what I'm doing here. Now, depending on what you're doing will determine the kind of image set you, that you need. But since I'm kind of focusing on my likeness, I just need images of me. But if you're doing some other subject, you'd, you'd have to find a source of images for that. But given that I'm doing myself, I can just take those with a phone and use them in building my model. But in any case, just know that these are, you know, some are from the uh, front off, from the front, some are kind of from the side, from up high, and then uh, down low with different expressions, some smiling, some goofy. Uh, some angry, just whatever I was doing, just to make faces and that kind of thing. But in any case, once you have your image set, just make sure that they're high quality, they're high resolution, you have good lighting, and then you can use these to build your model. So let's go ahead and load up Koye, and we'll use that to start the process of building this model. So to start Koye, depending on where you installed it, you just need to open up a command prompt and go to the directory. I'm gonna go to CD Koye. Um, uh, Koye uh, underscore SS, which is the directory, and you just type in GUI.bat, and that's going to start the app. And this takes a few seconds to start. Um, and once it starts, um, it's going to detect you know, your hardware. I'm using NVIDIA Dry, I'm using the NVIDIA toolkit here, which basically means it's using some, some CUDA under the, under the hood. And you can see that it's got a 16 gig GPU, a Tesla T4, which is uh, a, a data center class GPU, but uh, you can use an RTX 30 series or 40 series or even 20 series to do this kind of work. It just might take longer depending on which GPU you have available. Um, so once this starts, uh, you, you just have to go to the IP address for the machine. And this is still loading. The drive on this particular VM is not exactly the, the speediest thing in the world. So some of this stuff can take a minute to load uh, depending on what drive you use and i think i selected just a standard ssd but it's got to load a model and some other stuff in the background so we'll come back when it's done loading okay so now that that's loaded now this is where i can start working so the first thing that you do when you're building one of these models is you have to basically uh, tag the images or create a caption for the images and that's done under utility so if you install koye the first thing we need to do is caption the images using one of the, the many captioning utilities here 
I'm going to be using blip captioning, which is basically an AI based detection. Uh, it's going to look at the images and use uh, object detection on the images to create a description from that. So this is pretty straightforward to do. Just come over here and uh, find your image folder that you have. And mine is image right here. Select the, the image folder. And uh, then you put in a prefix. If you want something that's going to kind of trigger the, the model that's going to show up in all of your captions, you put man face and that will basically describe the, the caption here. So it's a man's face. And so that will be in all of the captionings that I create for these images. So that would mean that when I'm building my prompt, if I include these keywords, it's more likely to trigger that particular model and use my likeness in that, that uh, particular image that it's going to generate. So with that, um, let's go ahead and set that uh, to the blip caption there and just create uh, click caption images and that's going to launch a process down here in the command line and this uh, will load up a model and will take uh, a few minutes to caption the images and once that's done you're good to go with captioning we'll look at a couple of examples when this is done so once the everything is done running you'll see the captioning is complete and you can then pull up the original image folder and you'll see a bunch of files that look like this you're going to see a bunch of text files that um are associated with each of the images. So you can open one of these up and uh, I've opened up a few here. It's a man with a beard and a red shirt, a man with a red beard and a blue shirt, a man with a mustache and a plaid shirt, a man with a beard and a plaid shirt, a man uh, with a surprised look on his face. So there you go. Um, you got a lot of different um, captions that are generated. With it. But the main thing that is that it's got kind of the keywords uh, that you're interested in. So um, and mine was this particular one right here, man face, that appears in all of those uh, because I want that to kind of be the trigger word for this. And then whenever you generate the model, it's going to use the captioning along with the image to try to build the the model. And that, that's basically going to be the, the words that are going to be associated with the prompts that will then use the embedded data in the image to then put that into whatever image it generates. So let's go through the process of setting up the LoRa to build. So a LoRa is just the abbreviation for the model that we're gonna build, and it's gonna be based off of an, an existing model. So uh, for this, uh, the first thing that we need to do is do data preparation. So we did the captioning, but the next thing we need to do is kind of get this caption data into a format that we can use. So in this one, I'm going to use the instance prompt. I'm going to use the same keywords, man face, and the uh, class prompt is portraits. And this just helps classify the data uh, inside of the model. So it helps understand what it is you're kind of looking for. And so uh, repeats is basically going to be the number of repeats that you're going to be using over the image set. And I'm going to use 25 uh, per image. Uh, that's a good round number, uh, for, for doing this and much more than 25 is really overkill in my experimentation with this. And then we just need to find that folder that we were using image uh, right here and, uh, select that for the, the training images. Now, regularization images are optional. Uh, regularization images are useful if you are trying to build a model that focuses on a very specific entity that's not dominating the photo. For instance, if I was in a crowd of people, I, I might want to have regularization images where uh, I was in a crowd of people, but the, the crowd changes, for instance. And so it's focusing on me and the, the regularization images have uh, give it a way to kind of filter out the, 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 the noise and just focus on what it is I'm kind of working for. Uh, not needed though, in my experimentation, these are only needed if you have a dizzy image. But if in my images, there's a, a single subject that pretty much dominates the entire image and that's my face uh, kind of shoulder up. So I don't really need regularization images for this. Now down here, um, this is where you pick the output directory where it's going to use for uh, the training. And so for this, I like to create a, a folder called model um, or something like that. And then you can hit select. And then once you have the instance prompt and the class prompt set, you have this set to 25, you have your uh, folders hit, you can hit prepare training data. And uh, just to kind of show you what that does, it just basically moves the uh, images into a folder structure that looks something like this. Uh, and then it has a log output. And then this is where it will put the output from the model once it's done building. 
So that's the structure. And then you hit copy the folders to the folders tab, which is up above us right here. Before we get to that tab, though, the, the next thing we need to do is kind of set up the training. So after we've done the the, the prep uh, of the data, we can now set up the training. So I'm going to be using um, a SDXL, which is a Stable Diffusion XL model for this particular um, instance I'm going to be building. So <clears throat> the LoRa has to match the, the base model, which in this case is going to be Stable Diffusion XL base right here. So this is the pre-trained model, and this is a refiner if you want to use that one. I, I've experimented with both of these, and I really haven't seen a big difference. Um, so I just tend to use the base model for STXL based LoRa's. And the reason I use Excel is because they're high resolution images. And so uh, I already copied the image. That's my image folder uh, for this one. And um, I'm, so I'm going to use that one. And um, the output for this is a safe tensor. And this is where you're just going to name the model. So I can call it Blaze. Too, since I already have a model named Blaze. I'm not going to go through the full training on this since I've already trained the model. I'm just showing you how to set it up and what it kind of looks like when you go through the process. So the next thing to do is to select Safe Tensor. You can use a checkpoint. Safe Tensor is what I typically use for LoRa's. And then the Precision defaults to FP16, and which will be fine. And the regularization directory, you can choose that. I didn't copy that up. This was copied up from the prep. This was copied up from the prep. And so that that's pretty much all you need for that. The next thing is the parameters uh, down here. And this is uh, where you set the parameters for the build. Now, I use a preset on this. Now, there's those people that will say you can change all these settings and they go through detail lists. Now, I just use the presets. I found that these work just fine for everything I've ever done with this, that it's gotten pretty decent results. Since I'm using an XDXL, I need to make sure that I have an SDXL uh, build uh, for these presets. So I'm going to use uh, one of these uh, character models right here. And uh, so this is a um, character standard V11 and uh, choose that. So I'm going to tweak some of these settings down here. You can change the batch size. This is, depends on how much GPU RAM you have. Epochs is the number of models you want to build. And max train epochs is the number of maximum trains it'll do. I'm only going to train one. And um, you can train instances of the model and get generally better results the more refinement you do. But Truthfully, I've, I've done one shot at a lot of these and it's produced some great results. And if you want to train multiple instances of this, um, you can and you can judge based on the output which model is going to be the best one. But for this, one's probably fine. Now, another setting that uh, sometimes you have to tweak is this one right here for mixed precision. And this depends on your graphics card. Um, the particular one I use will support FP16. Uh, your graphics card may support something different for mixed precision. So you have to tweak that. You might get an error if you set it to FP16 on your graphics card and it doesn't support that. Uh, when you train it, it will get an error or something about doesn't support this. And you can try BF16 or no uh, mixed precision, which is fine. Um, that just that has some minor impacts on the quality of the output. But for the most part, it doesn't really matter. And the rest of this is pretty much the defaults. Um, so you can... Yeah, you know, pretty much keep the max resolution and keep the rest of this as uh, as is based on the presets. And once you kind of have all of that set, you have your your model selected, you have your train output name set, <clears throat> you have your uh, directories all set, you have the preset set, and you set your epochs to the number that you want to do in the precision set. You're ready to go, and you just hit start training. And the next thing that's going to do is launch the training in the background. And this will typically take, uh, on my GPU, on this VM, it could take 20 minutes. Uh, if it's a slower GPM, uh, GPU, it could take um, a couple hours. If it's a fast GPU, it could do be done as quick as five minutes. It just depends on the speed of the hardware. This is completely dependent upon how fast your GPU is. And this particular one is pretty decent, so it takes about 20 minutes to train on about 20 images. So I'm going to let that run and um, let you see the output when I am done. So the model took about 20 minutes to, to finish, and so I have this model folder. You can see here, there's the uh, the image folder that it created from those, uh, that, those captioned images. This is the log, and the main thing that I'm concerned about is the output, and this is the, the output from it, this model right here. It's about 220 megs or so. And I didn't generate any sample images, so there's no samples here. And this is just some of the parameters that it put into that, but you don't need that. The main thing is to grab this file right here. It's the, the safe tensor file. And 
the where you're going to drop that is in the stable diffusion folder. So I set my stable diffusion folder up when I installed this in my folder right here under stable diffusion web UI. And there's a folder in this called models. And in there, there's a folder called Laura's. And I've already pasted this model into that uh, particular model right there. So I just overwrote it. But <clears throat> this is the model that I wrote as output from my training. So now, once the model is in that Laura folder, I can get out of, uh, of Koye and you can just hit you know, close the command prompt for that and it will stop. And um, then you can launch Stable Diffusion. And so Stable Diffusion uh, is installed on the same machine. So I'm just changing directories to that and hitting Web UI and starting up this particular app. And this will actually automatically launch a browser window when it's up and running. So uh, Stable Diffusion is launched. Now, before we get into loading of the model that we created, a few things that we need to make sure we have here is we need to make sure that we have an SDXL model to use our SDXL uh, model that we created as the base model. So we're, I'm going to use Realism Engine. So if you search for Realism Engine SDXL, um, Realism Engine SDXL, and um, this is going to bring you to Civitai, and you can download this particular model. And it's a, a very useful model for generating photographic-like uh, images. And so it's it's a well-trained model uh, in the one that I'm using. Uh, this one, I think it's probably a little old. Uh, truth be told, I'm using, I'm using version three. Okay, I've got a more recent version for this the particular demo. And um, and you need to make sure that it's SDXL and that your model is also SDXL. So if you don't see your model when you click on the models tab, it's likely because the model that you're using for your, your checkpoint model, that is, doesn't match the the, the basically the, the class or the series that was used to build your LoRa. Since this was built on SDXL and that one is also built on SDXL, I can use this LoRa with this particular model. So that's important. But uh, whenever you go to generate an image, just kind of keep that in mind. Now, uh, to load my model into my prompt, I just simply click on it. And you go to Laura's tab, you click the model, which in mine is called Blaze, and it puts it up here into the prompt. And that's the syntax that I use in my prompt to say, I'm going to use this model. But I also have to put the, 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 the keywords that will trigger the model as well. So if uh, I click on Edit Metadata, it's going to show you kind of the keywords and the tags that were used to, to build this. So I built this off of 22 images and I put in that blip caption, man face. And it also showed up man in many of the objects that it detected as well. So man shows is, is a very strong keyword and face is another strong keyword as well. So uh, for mine, I want to make sure that I include man face in my prompt. So I'm more likely to get a strong response from the model when I click generate. And so uh, this being uh, loaded now uh, with that particular uh, model right here in my prompt and then the keywords, I should get a pretty strong response from the model uh, when I click generate. And so if I click over here on generation, um, that kind of looks like me, uh, I would say, um, and maybe a little bit aged, uh, but uh, that is kind of what I was looking for. So you can see that I'm getting a decent response without any kind of massaging of the prompt, just generating a, a, an image of myself using AI from the model that I'm supplying it, which I would expect it to do. Now there's a couple of things I can do here. I can make this more of a portrait and I can turn on high res. Uh, we can do like a 1.5 scale, not 4.5, that might, uh, 1.5. And that'll give me, uh, you know, 1024 by 1536, which is a decent image. And, you know, not a super high res photo, but decent enough anyway. And with that, <clears throat> I can generate another image. And this will take a little bit longer to create since it's a high res photo. And uh, you can kind of see a sampling, what it's kind of doing behind the scenes. And let's see if it generates something in my likeness. That kind of looks like me uh, if it was faded out and you kind of squint. Um, when it's done, it should be a lot more detailed um, based on the model. And so far, that is looking pretty decent. Um, so far, so good. So I'm getting a pretty strong response from my model already. And so <clears throat> if I wanted to uh, make this stronger, you can tweak this number right here. Um, that's basically telling this the strength of how much of this model you want to put into the prompt. If you're getting a strong response, you can sometimes use a lower setting here, um, like 0 0.8. And uh, if it makes a weaker response, then uh, if it doesn't produce something in your likeness, then you might end up with something that doesn't look like you. So you have to kind of scale that usually between like 0.5 and 1.5. 
it, depending on the strength of the response that you're getting from the model. And so far I'm getting a pretty strong response from this model. So one is a pretty decent sweet spot for this, uh, from what I can tell. Um, even though that, that's kind of, kind of looks like me. Um, well, not exactly, but, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to leave this closer to one uh, for now. <clears throat> and, um, for, for this, uh, if I wanted to make this uh, look like something else, I can start adding characteristics to this. So maybe I want to make myself um, a politician um, or something like that. And politician, uh, suit, um, a U.S. president or something like that. And let's just see what happens if I put in, um, uh, put USA president. And see what it generates here. And um, this might... Tweak it. I don't know what's going to, what I'm going to get, but it should get something that looks like a politician. Let's see if it generates my face in this man in the suit that it's generating right here. And if the response isn't strong enough, I can I can tweak this. So that's kind of what you have to do. Is you have to play with it, figure out what the the strength of the response is going to be. So by adding in those additional keyword prompts, um, I'm not getting as strong of a response as I would like here. So I'm going to turn this up. I'm going to go a little overkill to like 1.5 and maybe see how strong of a response I get with this one. And that's going to tell it I want more of me in the, in the prompt, uh, or my likeness that is based on the prompt and kind of be a stronger element inside of what I'm generating here. And so tweaking this is, um, going to work. So that looks more like me, um, my, my face anyway, and so you see where this finishes. Um, yeah, that's a little bit more like me, maybe a little bit too much. I'm going to tune that down just a little bit and, um, maybe to 1.3 and let's see what happens. Might, uh, if it starts to distort and sometimes that means that you're getting a little bit too much uh, of the model and, uh, it's not able to, uh, use some of the other elements from the prompt whenever you're generating your images. So, um, for this one. That, that one seems to be doing pretty well so far. That looks definitely like me. Let's let it finish and see what I get. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty decent there. That's, uh, kind of what I would look like if I was a little bit more clean shaven and I put a suit on and I look like a politician, uh, or something like that. So if I wanted to play with it some more, I can maybe do myself as an inmate. Uh, let's just leave the strength like here. Um, and just see what this generates. I have no idea what it's going to look like. Um, politician, inmate, uh, okay. Um, you know, something like that. If we're going to get political about stuff, I'm not trying to be political. I promise. I'm just thinking of things that I could type in that are kind of common pictures. I could put in like mug shot here. <clears throat> um, and maybe that'll put in like some kind of, uh, background to the image uh, as well. Um, and that does look a little bit rougher. <laughs> so it definitely looks like somebody that has uh, been arrested. And, uh, and this one is kind of in the same day. And that looks like a booking photo, I guess. Um, so yeah, you can see that it's kind of, kind of change it up a little bit, depending on whatever context I'm feeding into it. So, um, yeah, that, that is kind of looking like a, a booking photo there. So, um, you can see a, uh, one of those floating around the internet, uh, with my likeness, uh, you could say that I look like an inmate or a politician or something else. So I'm going to show you some sample images that I, uh, generated. So once you have these images generated, there's an outputs folder and, uh, text to images is where that's going to be. And these are ones that I was doing when I was playing with this before I was doing the recording of the video. And so I, I, I just to kind of click through these and what these might look like, there's me as a clown. I was trying to tweak it to kind of scrub it. And so these kind of look like me. Um, it's, uh, some bleed through from the base model, uh, through, and I had to kind of figure that out. There's some, me as a fireman, a policeman, uh, an inmate, uh, there's another politician photo. There's me in some 16th century uh, garb. There's a pirate. There's me as a college hipster, me as Superman, me, if I had a beard, um, me, if I was, uh, maybe about five years younger, me, um, I was tweaking with these, me, that's kind of, looked, not exactly, that's the one I generated. It doesn't really look like my likeness, but that one's pretty close there. And, uh, definitely some of those booking photos. So you can definitely tell that it's using my likeness in these images 
uh, building some of these AI based images. So just something fun to play with. And you can use this for all kinds of different, you know, utilizations. It, faces is one popular use case, but it'll work for any kind of object that you can think of. So if you want to do like dogs or cats, or a lot of folks use it for comic book art, they, they, they build a character and they'll build a, a model for their comic book character. And then they'll use the prompt engineering to create you know, images of that character in a certain setting. Um, it's really versatile in what you can apply it to. As you can see with this image set here, I was able to take just some pretty ordinary looking images of myself and generate a variety of different outputs from that in different kinds of things like politicians and police officers and pirates and superheroes and put beards on me and hats and so on. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. It's very powerful and it's a lot of fun to do too. I was, I enjoy doing this. It's just a fun little experiment. And hopefully uh, you can do the same with your experiments playing with stable diffusion and so on. And as always, like and subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of comment. Drop me a comment in the comment section down below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.